Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver, where we talk to local leaders about their successes, failures, and lessons learned on the journey to success. I'm Crystal Covington, and today I'm here with Allison Parks, owner of Conscious Real Estate, a philanthropic firm that donates 10% of profits to 501c organizations. She calls herself an agent of change and has donated thousands to philanthropic causes. Allison, welcome to the show. Thank you, lovely to be here. Oh yes. So I've known Allison for quite some time, so we have some very fun experiences to talk about today. First off, I want to talk to everybody about the concept of this philanthropy that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So you're giving away a lot of money to nonprofits, and I wanna know why. Why do you, as a realtor, decide to um, donate so many profits to philanthropic mission missions? <laughs> um, so actually the way we do it is it's actually 10% um, of the gross commission. Uh -huh. So it's actually not 10% of profits, but oh. um, it, it's really just following my heart. When I first started out in real estate, uh, I was really happy. I liked what I was doing, but it just felt like there's a little something missing. And so you know, when I first got out of college, I worked as a mental health counselor for a lot of years. I did some nonprofit work for a while. And so a lot of my heart was always in giving of myself in some kind of way. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that I can still do this in this new career and be happy. And this time, maybe instead of like giving my time or my efforts, yeah. I can actually donate and then bring in my clients and let them choose where that money goes and kind of create a culture of giving in both real estate and business. Yeah, that's so powerful. And I love the name that you chose, which is Agent of Change. Tell us a little bit about that and why you chose to call yourself that or refer to your business and yourself in that way. Uh, it was just a little play on real estate agent. <laughs> so it was like, well, I'm a real estate agent and an agent of change, you know, in the sense that, you know, we're able to make these positive contributions going back to the community. And so, you know, I like to think that the contributions we make actually do help to enact some positive changes. Nice. So you've been through some career changes. So you talked about already having been a counselor in the past and now you're in real estate. Uh -huh. Tell us a little about, bit about the transitions that you've been through. So I know you've had a ton of education all over the place. So tell us about those transitions, some of the growth that you've seen and how you ended up where you are today. Were you looking at my LinkedIn profile? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably a really interesting read. <laughs> I don't think it even has the half of it. I think there's more to the story. Yeah, actually. <laughs> I, I, I would almost say, well, so in my early 20s, I was started out on this path. I thought that, you know, I was a mental health counselor for five years out of college, and I thought that I was on this path, and I would go on, get the master's, get the PhD, and this would be my career path, you know, and then you get the house and the bigger house and the promotion, and I was on that path, and um, uh, I wound up getting laid off from a job, and everything just kind of, the excrement hit the air conditioning. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a Kurt Vonnegut quote, didn't make it up. Uh, I can't swear on TV. Um, and so um, it, was, it was kind of uh, commingled with the time that uh, I, I met a certain boyfriend and he was a really artistic type and just always just kept saying, we can do whatever we want to do, we can do whatever we want to do. And although maybe it wasn't necessarily, you know, the best relationship ever, I finally started to realize like, wow, you know, life doesn't have to be do this, do this, do this, you know, this whole linear thing. And so I began to really embody that these things are possible. But then that actually got really messy for a while because then when you think everything is possible, you don't necessarily think about things like grit and follow through. Yes. So I kind of just indulged myself for a lot of years, which is probably the really fun part of my LinkedIn profile that you saw. So I did a yoga teacher training at one point. Then I moved to South Korea to teach English where I actually, you could actually say I did technically work as an illegal, illegal immigrant on the side in Korea doing commercial voiceovers. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I did, that's a new one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to work outside your visa. Technically I worked as an illegal immigrant. Um, and then I, let's see, came back. I did a screenwriting program with UCLA. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and, and then at that point, I was in my early 30s and said, you know, um, I realized that I need to choose something. I can't just keep jumping all over the place. And so it almost felt like real estate was my plan D. 
you know, never in a million years did I think that that was something that I would want to do. And what's funny is so many times we have these expectations of what we should be doing and what will make us happy. And sometimes the thing that we always assumed wasn't the right thing for us. I'm just as happy as could be. I'm from a tiny town. I love being up in everybody's business, and that's what you get to do <laughs> you get in to real be estate. Really like, in everybody's business. Yeah, their money, I, their house. <laughs> yeah, and their money, their house, their kids, their dog. Um, you get to eat the snacks. Like, oh wow. Yeah, I mean, and you, you know, you spend a lot of time with these people, and so you get a lot of information from a lot of these people, and I love it. I love being part of people's lives, and you, you really can't trap me in an office for any certain period of time. And so I get to roam all over the place and it's actually perfect for me, so. Yeah, I saw something about you giving bike tours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, to, in all fairness, nobody's ever taken me up on that. We <laughs> offer bike tours, which I think is a brilliant way to see homes, especially you know if you're going somewhere like Capitol Hill where there's no parking. Yes. Um, but to date, no one has ever taken wow. me up on it. Yeah. Okay, you can take me on a bike tour anytime. Okay. Okay, we'll set that up. Okay, let's do it before it snows. Okay, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Um, so, but it sounds like you're really rocking it out. Your company is growing. Mm -hmm. And we talked a little bit recently about leadership. And that's something I really want to hit on mm -hmm. is the topic of, you know, you have this growing business and you have to recruit new, new realtors to work under you. Mm -hmm. um, so what is it like having to bring those people on, train them? How do you feel about leadership as a business owner? And how are you really working with yourself to improve yourself as a leader and be the best you can be? Sometimes I cry at night. <laughs> so, I mean, it's interesting. Um, I'd say leadership in something like real estate is interesting because, for instance, you know, if I were the CEO of a normally structured company where you know, everybody's on salary mm -hmm. and there's, you know, a hierarchical structure and they have all these expectations, at the end of the day, I can say, you need to do this or else. Mm -hmm. um, but in real estate, everybody's an independent contractor. And so I feel like that's actually where true leadership comes in because I really don't want power over these people anyways. Um, and I have no power over them to tell them to do anything outside of you know, following the law. Mm -hmm. So really what I need to do is actually try to truly be a leader and, and motivate these people and find what will bring, you know, what, what will motivate them. You know, because especially some ways of building your business might be successful for one person versus the next one. So I try to work really individually with everybody yeah. because you might be fantastic at talking to people on the phone. Somebody else might be fantastic at social media. You know, other people are great in person. Um, you probably know from knowing me that I can talk all day. I am scared to death of the phone. I don't know why. I know you said that before. <laughs> if I, it's okay if I know you. If I've never spoken to you before, um, in person, I'm afraid to call you. I, it's, it's the weirdest thing. So we, we all have our little things. And so I try to find ways to work with these everybody individually and really try to find ways to bring them out and try, hopefully help them shine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like it's almost forced you. Um, I've, I've seen all these little memes about the difference between a manager and a leader. So it's kind of like it forced you because you're managing independent contractors mm -hmm. to be more on the leadership side. You, you're not their manager. Mm -hmm. It's not like a corporate situation where you can say, well, I have this authority and I sign your timesheet. Mm -hmm. You have to actually inspire them and inspire them to care. Mm -hmm. That's so huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing that's one of our uh, history for Women of Denver, you actually presented a really cool workshop, and it was one of my favorites, on um, the topic of money. I forget what we titled it, but we all kind of tackled our money stories, and you had this funny, I just remember you kept going like this, it was like, <laughs> when you pointed towards us. My hand but, gesture. Yeah, it was super impactful. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the things that were basically holding us back emotionally and mentally when it came to our money and our finances. Um, I'd love to learn a little bit about, you know, how you learn those things, how you learn to help people tackle that, mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of give a few tidbits for the audience on, you know, what can they do to kind of manage that money story. That's a big one. That's a mouthful. Yes. Well, well, I guess I've done a lot to work on it, really. Um, yeah, I feel like for myself, a long time, for a long time, my biggest struggle was mindset. And I think, in particular, a lot of my major mindset 
was I kept feeling like I had this fear, I had this fear, I had this fear. And I kept thinking that it was fear of failure because that just seemed so common. It's like, of course, you know, we're afraid to do this new thing, we're afraid to fail, you know, we're afraid to be ostracized and die alone and all the terrible things that potentially could happen if you fail. You know, clearly, you know, yeah, step one, step two, step three, you know, you, you fail, then you're ostracized and you die alone. Like, yes. that's, the, that's the only outcome, oh you know. Um, and so in my own particular situation, it, it took me several years to think this through. And it's funny because it sounds just so trite. But when I actually finally looked at it and said, okay, when have you ever actually failed? And I realized that any single time that I've ever truly tried at anything in my life, I haven't failed at all. So I, I, I can truly say that of all the times I've really tried, I've actually never failed. That is a huge realization. Yeah, and so I realized it was on the flip side, it was almost more of a fear of success. You know, it, it seems like when you have this story for so long, you know, um, like maybe you, you have your certain group of friends mm -hmm. and everybody thinks that, oh, money is supposed to look like this. You know, maybe if you're in middle class, you shouldn't have too much money. Or maybe, um, you know, if you're, in pop if you're coming from poverty, then all of a sudden you have money, then everybody's going to want it from you. You know, we all have like these, sorry, I'm kind of stumbling on my words. It's but like we a lie. Yeah, we, we all have these beliefs that are around money and so much of it is untrue. Yes. Or maybe even if there are some truths in it, we are able to rewrite what's really happening. And so once I realized that I actually had a fear of success, because it's like, well, who will I be then if I am successful? What does that mean? Does that mean I can't go whine to my father anymore? Does that mean, do I have to get new friends? Do I have to dress differently? Yeah. Um, Unknowns. Yeah, um, and actually I find that it's even more amazing because if you think about it, the more successful you are, the more eccentric you can be. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you think about it, like, that's actually what finally kind of started pushing me when I started realizing, you know, how strange all the CEOs were, yeah. you know, that we read about, They're and, all you know, on all, all LinkedIn and all the yeah. biographies read. I'm like, oh, wow, that is the best reason to be successful. Like, it's just so I can finally be as weird as I want to be. It's not about the money. I just want to adopt dogs and not have to, like, fly and coach where I don't fit and just be weird. That's really all I want money for. <laughs> I think that's in your Facebook profile. Weirdo who has lots of dogs or something like that. And, and the philanthropic real estate company. Yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, I almost adopted another dog yesterday. Thankfully oh. I did not, yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah I'm gonna wait another six months. Okay, <laughs> good, yeah. good for you. Yeah. All right, and so that was a mouthful, so I did ask you quite a bit. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing all that. Mm -hmm. um, so what would you say is, after all of what you've shared, the culmination of everything that you've learned, what, what would be, I guess I would call it the secret to success? You know, what would you say, after all the things you've learned, your challenges with money, all the things you've overcome, um, you know, what is that big lesson for you of how do you succeed, how do you get past all those things and kind of become the best you? Um, sort of similar to what I said with my money story is, is overall, never stop questioning yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether it's related you know, to your job or money or just your whole belief system or even relationships, we always have you know, these beliefs where it's like, what, you know, for instance, somebody might say, well, I don't want a relationship because I don't want this. Like, who said that this necessarily even comes with relationships? Ooh. Is that just your belief that relationships come with that? Or do relationships really come with that? You know, so, you know, or similarly, if you feel, if there's the hands, the hands are starting to go now since you asked oh. for it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and so many times we have these negative thoughts about ourselves. Yes. And every single time we have these negative thoughts about ourselves, stop and actually look at what does that really mean? Yeah. What does that really mean if you're, you know, if you're thinking, I can't do this. Really? Can, can you truly not do it? Or is the truth that you're afraid to do it? Is the truth that you're afraid you're gonna succeed and then now you have to succeed all the time and then you're gonna have to put on like real pants in the morning instead of sweatpants? Yeah, that's a constant struggle. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just a matter of just really always questioning yourself on everything because we tell ourselves all this stuff, you know, our brains are just a really fun place that aren't always our best friend, and so I think it's just always best to just keep questioning yourself and your beliefs, um, and that's the way to really actually become the best you. Because yeah, we just have so much in our stories. So yes. yeah, when really we can write our own story and create a life that looks like something that we never thought 
you know, we that could even, even exist. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, 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 I kind of feel so cheesy saying this. <laughs> I feel so cheesy <laughs> saying true. this. Because for so many years, I hated other people when they said this. I'm like, I did too. I'm like, I'm like you are so, so annoying. <laughs> but, I, I, but I'm like finally at a place in my life where it's like, oh my gosh, my life is cooler than teenage me ever even thought that it could be. <laughs> like I've actually succeeded at my teenage cheesy Allison dreams and I never thought that was possible and I used to hate people when they said that but that was just because I wasn't happy with my life yet <laughs> yeah it's so uh, yeah I actually have it and it's kind of just been by yeah arguing with myself a lot <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my gosh well you have shared a ton of wisdom already but is there anything that you feel like you just want to make sure everybody knows or everybody gets from this interview with you hmm Hmm. Can I do two things? Sure. Okay. First thing, um, people talk to me all the time. And when I say, you know, when I tell them that I give away money um, with my company, everybody always says, God, I wish I could do something like that with my job, with my work, with my life or whatever. And my advice to them is you can, but it doesn't have to look like what I'm doing. I mean, cause I'll be completely honest. I'm a single woman. I don't have any children or dependents other than a few dogs. Mm -hmm. And so when I started my company, I was in a position where I could donate this money. You know, I understand that if other people are in these situations, it may not be prudent to donate money, but there's always a way that if you feel a need, it, it could be either in your work. Um, you know, for instance, uh, you know, if, some, if somebody has a manufacturing company and they want to give back and, and they don't want to donate any money, but they actually want to help some people, like, are you aware of the fact that people on the autism spectrum make some of the best production? They're, oh. they're fantastic employees and they're a highly underutilized um, and underemployed group of people. These people will come to work every day, on time, happy to work, work all day. They don't yeah. need to take breaks. You know, they don't want to socialize and check their phone and text they're happy to go and work. You know, so there's always a way that you, can, that you can find within your business to give back, you know, or even it's just as simple as, you know, I always tell the story of, um, uh, so when I was nine, my mom passed away, and the librarian um, at my school, um, kind of, I went to school, same school, K through eight, mm -hmm. all, all through my junior high years, just maybe once a month or so, she would just take me off campus, and we would just go have lunch off campus, and she would just sit and listen to me talk. And it's like, yeah, and that sounds like the smallest thing ever, but that happened when I was probably 11, and now I'm almost 40, and I'm still talking about it. And that's so, so valuable. That, that's the thing. And so it's like there's always something that you can do, even if it's just something small for one person, mm -hmm. because also if you plant that seed in that one person, who's to say that, that, that you know, what work they will carry on and what exactly. good they will then go forward to do in the world. It just it, expands. It, exactly. So, um, so, I, so I say you don't feel like you need to do what I do there's always a way to give of yourself if that's something you feel called to do and there's a million fun and creative ways to do it. And it can even be a lot of profitable ways for your business. Nice. And, and then the second thing that I would say is, um, and, and, I, and I, feel, I feel a little, uh, I don't wanna walk on thin ice on this one, you know, because I'm sure you probably like myself um, on Facebook probably hear from a lot of uh, Denver natives yeah. or people who have lived here, everybody's upset the rents are going up, home yes. prices are going up, traffic's being created. You know, uh -huh. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of new issues that we're facing as a city. Yes. And, and I'm not necessarily saying, because I understand that with rising rents, we may be losing some of you know, our workforce that we need because they will need to move. And you know, by all means, like I do, you know, I'm, I'm voting to raise the minimum wage and all that, and so I'm not necessarily speaking to that. But I'm speaking more to sort of what I was talking about earlier with our mindset is it feels like so many of these people are saying, well, I'm never going to be able to afford a house if this happens. Yes. If you keep saying that to yourself, then you're right. Yes. There's always a way to hack the system. And so, you know, our city is becoming one of these cities. And, and, and I have to say, there's a lot of positive changes that are coming too. Mm -hmm. But our city is becoming one of these cities where you're going to have to want to be here. Yes. And you're going to I don't necessarily say you have to work to be here, but we're going to have to be savvy. We're going to have to be nimble in order to make things work here in Denver. Yeah. And so my piece of advice is for the people who are feeling that way, I feel like if you stay in that mindset, you're going to get left behind in this beautiful city that we love. Aww. So my advice is actually always stay on your toes. There's always a way to hack the system. Um, I love that terminology of hack the system. Yeah. 
it kind of speaks to having to be savvy, having to think in new and innovative ways, and that's something we should always challenge ourselves to do regardless of the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something I've just been feeling lately. Yeah. So, yeah, I see a lot of it on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Good. Okay. Well, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for everything you shared. Thank you. Yes. And thank you for joining us on Inside the Women of Denver. And always remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known. I'll see you soon.